let's derive Euler-Lagrange equation. As we said, our goal is to find a curve y of x that goes through two points, we defined point 1 and point 2, such that the functional given by this definite integral is stationary. And what it means is that its variation, delta s is 0, for any small variation of delta y of x, which is itself a function. In other words, if we find the true y of x, and then we add a small arbitrary delta y of x to it, we don't expect this integral to change. Last time we said that we can write this in a nice notation using calculus of variations. Delta s over delta y equals zero. And uh, this is very much like uh, the equation we use to find maximum or minimum of a function. And we solve it, solve it for y, y of x. So that's all we need to do. Well, even though it looks simple, of course this object is a bit tricky. First of all, delta y of x is a function. And we don't know how to divide by a function when finding derivatives. The way out from this predicament is to write delta y of x in terms of a number times some arbitrary function eta of x. Now, this uh, function eta of x obviously has to satisfy the bounds. So it must vanish at x1 and x2. Why? Because if it doesn't, then uh, we can never add it to y of x and still be passing through these two points, 1 and 2. Now, if alpha is equal 0, then our perturbation, y of x plus delta y of x, always goes back to simply y of x. So alpha equals 0 is the point of interest for this parameter. And then we perturb it up and down, uh, slightly positive, slightly negative, to see what will happen to uh, the functional s. Let me write the following derivative. Delta s over delta y, a partial derivative, evaluated at alpha equals 0, and set it, this whole uh, derivative, to 0. And let's think what, uh, what's the meaning of that. Well, like we said, that alpha equals 0 means that we are uh, recovering the function that we are trying to find. And derivative with respect to alpha of functional s around that value being 0 simply means that s is stationary, or delta s is 0. So in fact, this requirement, or this condition, is equivalent to the requirement of the functional derivative to be equals to zero. The caveat is now we have, if we solve this equation, it must be true for any eta of x as long as this eta of x satisfies the bounds that we are imposing. Okay, so this is now step forward because we know how to evaluate partial derivatives. And let's do just that. So. Uh, if we write partial derivative, um, by the way, let me use a uh, slightly different notation here, um, partial d subscript alpha s will in fact mean this partial derivative. And so, if we write this partial derivative, We can now try to see whether we can simplify and uh, uh, get uh, and equate it eventually to zero. Okay, so that's what we'll do eventually. 
because alpha doesn't appear anywhere inside the integral, we can penetrate with this uh, differential operator, this partial derivative with respect to alpha inside the integral. So to do that, we have then to apply this operator and act on f. And here we need a chain rule, recall chain rule, for partial derivatives. Say you have an unknown, um, say you have a function uh, z, and you are trying to find partial derivative with respect to s. Well, the chain rule says, and uh, all of individual functions that it depends on, you can uh, apply this chain rule and break it into these various terms. Okay, now we can continue then and write that, in fact, this <coughs> partial derivative will now be broken into two terms. So we have these two uh, functions. The derivative of f with respect to y, then we multiply by derivative of y with respect to alpha. So that will be the first term. Second term, the derivative of f with respect to y prime, the slope, times the derivative of y prime with respect to alpha. And if we try to do the same with x, we will get zero because alpha does not uh, depend on x or vice versa. Now, all we need to do is to find uh, partial derivatives of y with respect to this parameter alpha. Our y is, in fact, a function of alpha because uh, we want to decompose it in terms of the true value of uh, y of x, which is this term, when alpha vanishes, plus alpha times eta of x, that we perturb with. So this is in fact how our y looks inside uh, this integral for the moment. Well, if we need to find the slope of this, it'll be simply the slope of the true curve, here alpha equals zero, plus alpha times the derivative of eta of x. Let's see, we need to find uh, the partial derivative of y with respect to alpha. So we can see right away from this expression that this is simply eta of x. And likewise, partial derivative of y prime with respect to alpha is simply derivative of eta with respect to x. And so we can now substitute this into the expression here. So let's do that. I'm going to go back and erase here. And we get that we have eta of x and we have eta prime of x. Okay? Well, this is great, except we want to solve this equation when eta can be any function. The trick that uh, we use is to try to factor out eta, except eta has its derivative, so we can just factor it out. To help us with that, uh, we can uh, integrate by parts, because this derivative here looks like if we can uh, integrate it by parts and use the knowledge of eta x1 equals eta x2 equals zero, then it might, uh, something might cancel out and vanish. So, uh, recall that for integrating by parts, if I have a integral, definite integral, and uh, of u with respect uh, to dv, then I can write it as uh, u v evaluated at these boundaries, a and b, minus, um, v with respect to u. Okay. So, if we look at the second term, 
and apply uh, integration by part, we get the following. We get that the uh, partial derivative of f with respect to y prime times eta prime x dx. Then we apply this formula. So we simply recover this is now my dv in this notation above. So then I get uh, the derivative of f with respect to y prime times eta of x evaluated at these points x1 and x2 minus and the remaining part will be x1 x2 and uh, now I have eta of x but this here I have to differentiate with respect to x okay it's a little messy <clears throat> okay but the good news is that this term here in fact cancels and so we are left with something that has now eta dependence and it means that we can in fact factor things out so let's do that now my derivative of the functional at alpha equals zero will be I'll have eta of x and then multiplied and in parentheses and in parentheses I will have um, the partial derivative of f with respect to y minus d dx and then the derivative of f with respect to y prime. If we want functional s to be stationary, that must be true for any eta of x, as long as it, of course, satisfies our boundary conditions. Now, what does it mean? If this can be anything, then the only way that this integral will be zero, if, in fact, the second, uh, uh, this factor here will be zero. Okay, so this must be zero. And voila, we get the equation and this equation is in fact the Euler equation, the uh, Lagrange Euler equation. Okay. Now, this and we can see that uh, since we evaluated at alpha equals zero It means that we will recover our function y as a function now of this parameter alpha and x to be exactly what we want, namely uh, uh, y as only function of x or the function we are after, y of x. So this is Euler-Lagrange equation.